Hello, I'm Captain Ted Jones, host of Pleasure Boater TV, and I want to talk to you about one of the great safety devices that's been invented in recent years in the marine industry, and that's the signal mate. Why is it a safety device and why is it so important? Because it controls your horn and any light you want. The horn gives the general direction and the light pin points exactly which vessel is signaling. And we'll completely install all the wiring hooked up. It's time to show you exactly how the signal mate operates. All three signal mate models, console, flush, and portable, operate exactly the same. I'll start out by pressing the on off button just momentarily, and it will do an LED to make sure all the LEDs are working correctly. Signal mate will now be in manual setting with both the horn graphics and the manual LED illuminated. In this startup condition, the horn can be used as a typical horn button by pressing the manual button. If the output button is pressed, light graphics will illuminate and the horn graphic will be extinguished, indicating that now the light device will be the output. If the output button is pressed again, both the horn and light graphics will illuminate, indicating both horn and light will be in the output. Press the output again, and both the horn and light graphics will go out. This indicates that neither the horn nor the light will be the output to a device, and allows the operator to preview the output LED sequences during the automated modes or manual presses. The outputs can be cycled by pressing the output button until the desired outputs are selected. The manual button can be used for normal operations or maneuvering, such as signaling your intentions to other boats when crossing, meeting head-on, or overtaking. Signal Mate will allow you to simultaneously signal with both your horn and the 360-degree anchor light for maneuvering, which will greatly increase the communications between boats at night. It can be very difficult to determine which boat is signaling with only a horn. When the mode button is pressed, mode will illuminate along with power making way found in the restricted visibility section. Each press of the mode button will advance to the next section. The choices will continue to loop around until the appropriate selection is made as follows. In restricted visibility like rain, fog or snow. Now in the power making way mode, we get a five second blast every two minutes. Next, power not making way, it's underway but not moving, you get two five second blasts every two minutes. All the conditions under number three are signaled by five second blasts followed by two one second blasts every two minutes. Nuke stands for not under command, for example, might be a loss of steering or something like that. Ram is restricted in ability to maneuver, such as dredging or cable lying, something of that nature. Sail is uh, without propelling machinery. Fish is using an apparatus, example nets or lines or something like that. Towing means just what it says, towing or pushing another vessel. Towed and manned is a five second blast followed by three one second blasts every two minutes. Immediately follows the signal made by the towing vessel. At anchor, well that's a one second blast followed by five second blast followed by a one second blast. This occurs every minute. Signal mate can be set to select any one of the modes and any combination of outputs in the ready standby condition waiting for either the single or repeat button to be pressed to begin execution of the output sequence. When the single button is pressed while in any of the modes, signal mate will perform one sequence and wait for the next key press. But when the repeat button is pressed, signal mate will continue to repeat the sequence at the proper time intervals for international and inland waters. The sequence will continue until another button is pressed. In addition to the restrictive visibility modes in the box right here, there are also the danger, doubt, and the distress modes. The danger, doubt signal should be used when a dangerous condition exists or in doubt about the intentions of other boats, which is signaled by five short rapid blasts. A 360 degree white light can supplement the horn signal, danger, doubt, for inland and international waters. The distress signal should be used when a vehicle is in distress or requires assistance. The signal can be continuous blast of the horn or an SOS signal with a horn light or both. The international distress signal of an SOS is three third of a second blast, three one second blast, and three third of a second blast or international Morse code for SOS. Signal mate can also go into an inland distress light mode by pressing and holding the repeat button for two seconds when in the SOS mode. This allows the light to go on and off at a rate of 50 to 70 times per minute as required by the rules for distress on inland waters. 
A reminder, sound and light signals may be used simultaneously to signal maneuvering, restricted visibility, danger, doubt, and distress. The last mode, horn or light on, allows the outputs to be switched on and can be used to control the horn for a steady blast for distress, anchor light, or any other device connected to the outputs, or the 12 volt port adapter. Remember, we removed that on this installation, but on some installations you may want to use that and actually plug one of those portable lights into it. SignalMate is designed to provide backlighting in conditions of reduced light or darkness. The light sensor located in the SignalMate logo senses light and will illuminate the back panel as needed. That concludes the demonstration of how to install your SignalMate and also how to use it. Hello, I'm Captain Ted Jones, host of Pleasure Boater TV, and I want to talk to you about one of the greatest safety devices that's been invented in recent years in the marine industry, and that's the signal mate. Why is it a safety device and why is it so important? Because it controls your horn and any light you want. The horn gives the general direction and the light pinpoints exactly which vessel is signaling. And we'll give you a complete demonstration on how it operates after we show you how to install it. Basically, it controls the horn and any light you want, as we said, for any one of these functions right here that I'm showing you. Or you can run just the light or just the horn. When we demonstrate it, I'll show you that. But right now, first, I want to talk to you about how to install it. First of all, find a location on your helm somewhere. Now, we're aboard a 57 to FIBA. We're in the pilot house, and I'm going to put it down here in the pilot house. It could go up on the bridge just as easily. As a matter of fact, it can go anywhere in the boat because you only need a few wires, and anybody can install it that has a limited electronical knowledge. It's DC. Any voltage that your particular yacht has, most of them are 12 volts, some are 24. You can get a mount like this where it, it mounts on the surface something like this, or you can have a flush mount. Now, I felt like in a pilot house here on a Defever should be a flush mount. With the flush mount kit comes this special bezel right here that you put around it. So the first thing you want to do is find a spot that you feel it'll fit just fine. We're going to put it up here. We already have a radio up here and some monitoring devices, a remote spotlight control, what have you. So we're going to put it about right up here. As you can see, it's just going to fit perfect. As a matter of fact, it looks like that this particular console was designed to put it up here. Now, before you decide that, we're, we've already removed this hatch right here, we want to look back in here and make sure there's no obstruction because all of this is going to be behind this. This is wood, you could mount it in fiber glass or anything like that that you want to. I drill a hole in each of the four corners where I can insert a jigsaw blade. Then I insert the jigsaw and cut out the rectangular space. Now, make sure that the signal mate will slide into that space nice and snug. But before we do that, we have to remove the portable 12 volt output socket that is for a searchlight or spotlight. To remove that socket, I merely unscrew it here on the inside and disconnect it, pull the spade lugs off, take the socket out. Now the signal mate will slide nice and easily into the hole we've cut. If the hole's a little too snug, I can take a file or a rasp and kind of work on it just a little bit so it'll get in a nice snug hole. Now that I've done that, I'm ready to start connecting the wires. The supply voltage can be directly applied to signal mate with its fused input and protected outputs for portable applications and where a dedicated switch or breaker not be available or desired. First of all, before you connect any wiring, take the fuse out of the signal mate. You can reinstall it later. Choose a wire size that fits the amperage and voltage that you're using. Now, most boats use it 12 volts. Some have 32 volt or 24 volt, depending on what your particular installation is. Feed the wires from the horn and light through the rubber grommet or strain relief on the back plate of the signal mate, allowing a little extra wire for a service loop. Connect the wires to the signal mate from the horn to the wire ready terminal block marked horn. Positive voltage. You don't have to run a ground if you're using the same ground that's being used for your horn and your light. Connect the wires to the signal mate for the 360 degree or anchor light to the wire ready terminal block 
marked light. Again, only the positive wire need to be connected. That is, unless you're using a separate negative wire. Connect the positive voltage wire supply to the wire ready terminal block marked power, then connect the negative voltage supply wire to the wire ready terminal marked power. Now in DC voltage, red is always positive, black is always ground. If you have several red wires like we have here, you can always remember by tying a knot in a wire, the old code, the knot is hot. The output of the signal mate is solid state with shutdown protection for currents that exceed 20 amps. Current in rush limits are set at 90 amps to allow for motor startup circuits and large filament bulbs. Now we're ready to retrofit the signal mate wiring to a horn or an existing light. We're going to choose a wire size for the horn or light depending on the amperage and the length of wire and run from the signal mate to the retrofitting connection point. Usually that's not going to be very far because you don't go to actually to the horn or the light. You merely go to the switch or the button you have on board the boat that controls the horn or light. Look here. We tip this panel up and you can see there's the button for the horn. Now we're going to take the red wire and we're going to be sure and hook it to the load side. That's very important. Now to figure out which is the load side, it's very simple. Merely make sure the breaker is on and you have power going to the momentary push button for your horn. Then take your voltmeter, put the probe on one side. If you have 12 volts, that's not the load side, that's the feed side. Go to the other side of the switch and it should be zero until you push the button. As soon as you push the button and close the switch, obviously you'll have 12 volts. This is the load side. The same thing will apply to our light when we get around to that. So this red wire is the one that we connected to the positive horn wire in the signal mate box itself. Next, we're going to hook up the light. Again, find the light switch for the anchor light or 360 degree light figure out which is the load side by taking the voltmeter. If you have 12 volts on one side, that's not the load side. That's the feed side. Put the positive lead of the voltmeter to the other side. If you have no voltage without turning the switch on. That is the load side. Of course, when you turn the switch on, you'll have 12 volts. Now, if you connect the signal mate in this manner, that is using the load side, you'll still be able to use the horn and light switches independently. Now, I would test the signal mate before I permanently install it, in case you have a bad connection or something like that. So after you put it through its test to make sure that everything's working correctly, that is the horn and the light responds, you can go ahead and install the signal mate. To do that, we'll take our special flush mount installation kit, and what we're going to do is drill extra holes. You see, there are holes there that will line up with the front of the signal mate, and you can use the screws supplied with your signal mate to attach that special plate to the signal mate. But this time, what we're going to do is drill an extra hole. I'll show you what we're going to do with that in a minute. You can see the four holes being drilled. Now we're going to take that special installation plate and attach it to the signal mate. That is after we've removed the standard plate that came with it. Now you see why the four extra holes are there. We slide it into position and we're going to take screws. If you have a very thick wood, you can just use a good wood screw. If the wood is not that thick, then what you're going to want to do is actually through bolt it by putting a screw all the way in with a washer and a nut on the back side. In this case, we have plenty of wood, so we're just using four wood screws to attach the signal bait to the console where we've decided to put it. Now with the signal mate completely installed, all the wiring hooked up, it's time to show you exactly how the signal mate operates. All three signal mate models, console, flush, and portable, operate exactly the same. Welcome back aboard Pleasure Boater here at the Baltimore Boat Show. Let me show you something I found that's the neatest thing. It's a safety device that I'd recommend for every boat out there. It's called the signal mate. How many times have you been in fog or restricted vision of and you're trying to remember what are the right signals. If you even know the signals, you should know the signals. Well, the people from SignalMate have come up with the answer. This simple little black box, very inexpensive. And what they built here is a display. This represents your boat. This represents probably your anchor light. I'd recommend you hook it to that. You hook it to any light you want. And this represents your horn, okay? Now, on the console of your boat, you probably have an anchor light switch. That's important. You probably have a button for your horn right there. This is going to tie into that. And it's
So simple. We're talking about three wires. Now, it takes anywhere from zero up to 32 volts, but probably your boat, most of them, are going to be 12 volts or 24. You use what's used in your console, tie the 12 volts in. Let me show you what this thing will do right here. We, we hit the mode button, and here represents the different signals you would want in fog. Power boat making way, power boat not making way, uh, a nuke which is not under command, a ram which is restricted in maneuverability, a boat, a fishing boat, something like that. And to do that, you just go down and pick the one that you want if you're in fog. And then all you have to do is hit this and watch what happens. Now, I have this set up right now for both the light and the horn. They will flash simultaneously under Rule 36 of the Coast Guard. You can do that. You can have both the light and the horn, any signal. Now, if you don't want to use both, you can select right down here that you want just the light or just the horn or neither one. And if you want to, you can go to manual, which takes it out of mode and automatically do it yourself manually. This device absolutely could save lives. It's easy to put in. It comes in either the mount like this, okay, external, or it comes in a mount like this if you want to make it look really nice and sink it into your console or an overhead. Oh, one of the bonus you get with this mount right here I wanted to show you too is you can also use one of these lights. These are common. You can get these anywhere, okay, these external spotlights. They have a plug right here, and you can plug in and that would be in conjunction with the anchor light. Whenever it goes light, this itself will light. So you could shine it at somebody, okay? Here's the nice thing. Instead of trying to decide about pressing horn buttons and what's the right number and what's the right code, you just put it in the proper mode and let it do its thing. You can pay attention to what you should be paying to, your chart plotter, your radar, especially if you're in fog. You get the idea? It's all about safety. Signal mate, and guess what? Coming up here in just a minute on the show, I'll give you a website where you can get these.